The Ukrainian army, which continues military operations in the Kursk region of Russia, destroyed all the soldiers of the 3rd platoon of the 4th Division of the 3rd Battalion of the 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian Armed Forces during an operation. Family members of one of the soldiers who died reported this. The platoon that tried to attack near the city of Sudza, Kursk region, was destroyed by fighters of the 82nd Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. It should be noted that the city of Sudza is under the control of the Ukrainian army. Recall, on October 10, Russian Marines from the 155th Naval Infantry Brigade overran a team of Ukrainian drone operators in Zeliniai Shlyak, a tiny hamlet in western Russia's Kursk Oblast. The Russians stripped the Ukrainians, ordered them to lie face down on the ground and then shot them, killing all nine. A week later, Ukrainian Marines from the 501st Marine Battalion counterattacked in Zeliniai Shlyak, and meted out a measure of vengeance. A platoon of Marines riding in several M-113 armored personnel carriers, led by a pair of T-64 tanks, thundered along the main north-south road threading past Zeliniai Shlyak. The 501st Marine Battalion isn't the only Ukrainian unit that's out for revenge in Kursk, which a strong Ukrainian force invaded on August 6, quickly seizing a salient measuring several hundred square miles. Three elite Ukrainian brigades, the 82nd and 95th Air Assault Brigades and the 47th Mechanized Brigade, have also counterattacked the 155th Naval Infantry Brigade. The Russian Occupation Army fighting against Ukraine will soon be transferred to ancient BRDM-2 armored vehicles. The mass depreservation of these Soviet vehicles has begun. OSINT researcher Jumpy drew attention to this on his X account. Analyzing satellite images of equipment storage bases in Russia, he noticed that the Russians had begun repairing BRDM-2s for further dispatch to the front. It looks like Russia is starting a mass decommissioning of BRDM-2s at bases like the 22nd. This is pretty good news, the expert wrote. In his comments, he clarified that the Russians had already decommissioned the BTR-70 and BTR-60 and put them into use. The fact that the Russians needed BRDM-2s at the front speaks to the growing shortage of normal armored personnel carriers in the Russian occupation army. The BRDM-2 is not only a very outdated model, it also has a low capacity, only four soldiers can fit in it a driver, commander, gunner, and shooter. In addition, the BRDM-2's armor is significantly inferior to modern armor standards, especially compared to the latest armored vehicles. This armored vehicle has armor thicknesses from 6 to 14 millimeters, which provides bulletproof and anti-fragmentation protection. This is sufficient to protect against small arms of up to 7.62 millimeter caliber and light fragments. The BRDM-2 also does not have special anti-mine protection. The BRDM-2 is a seven-ton Soviet armored combat vehicle developed in the 1960s to perform reconnaissance and patrol missions. The vehicle was widely used in the Soviet Union. Production of this model of armored vehicle was discontinued in the 1980s under the USSR. The main purpose of the vehicle is reconnaissance and patrol tasks, which requires compactness and mobility. Equipped with two machine guns of 14.5 and 7.62 millimeter calibers, Earlier, it was reported that Vladimir Putin was desperately emptying Russian museums of obsolete tanks to repurpose them for his creaking war effort. It has emerged. Aging Soviet-era T-62s are seen being modernized in a round-the-clock factory in Chita, Siberia. The drive to retrofit the decades-old tanks highlights the desperation of Putin's military machine while Ukraine is being supplied with the most modern Western tanks. Some of the tanks being revamped at the 103rd plant may be 60 years old, dating from the time Nikita Khrushchev and Leonid Brezhnev were ruling the USSR. It is sad that the number of exhibits of military museums will be reduced, said one report. Russia halted T-62 production 12 years ago, but may still have as many as 2,500 of them held in stores and museums. The tanks were first built in 1961, a further development of the T-55 series, and became the standard tank in the Soviet arsenal and remained in reserve in many former USSR countries and in frontline use for other countries. More than 22,700 T-62s were built in total, and it was later replaced on the production lines by the T-72 in 1973, which is still widely in use 
in Russia and Ukraine today. Another footage has been released that confirms the presence of North Korean soldiers in Russia. In the footage taken by a Bariat soldier and circulated on Telegram channels, it can be seen that there are a large number of Korean soldiers in one of the military units in the Primorsky region. It's noted that Korean soldiers were placed in the military unit of the Motorized Rifle Division in the village of Sergeyevka. The soldier shooting the video said, Our allies have arrived from North Korea. We hope this will end the war. The military unit is said to be new in Primorsky region and opened in 2022. It should be noted that a few days ago, images of Korean soldiers undergoing training at a military training ground and being supplied with military supplies were also spread in Primorsky. <laughs> Soyuz <laughs> <laughs>